following video demonstrates how to import Leica data, specifically TRK data from the mobile mapping system, and then we will run some quick routines on it to help tidy it up a bit. So I'm going to drag and drop that file in. Enforce looks at the data to check its extent, so it's found the images in the scan data as well. I'm just going to press OK. Enforce now converts those images and imports the point cloud data. You'll join me once that process is finished. Now that the data has been imported, we can start to look at it. Down the left hand side of the screen you can see the point clouds properties. Uh, the display mode here is the first property we can come to and to change. So at the moment we're in normal mode which is essentially red, green and blue, i.e. the colour it was assigned to at scan time. And if I change that to say intensity we'll see the intensity channel. And if I change that again to say group colour we'll see the colour assigned to each point based on its scan. So here you can see under the group section each of the scans. So what becomes immediately apparent is that some of this noise can be removed by running our overlapping scan filter because what we can tell from this is that different objects appear in only one or two scans in which case we can say to the system only keep data that is in say three or more. So if I go to group by overlapping scans I can say my minimum group count is three normally for static scans that would usually be two and my individual volume i.e the box size controls the individual boxes that are used to segment the point cloud and then analyze the data within that volume to see how much data is in it from different scan locations. So I need to add myself a new group, which goes in there, and then use that as the target group, and then press apply. Okay, now that process is finished, we can check the results. So if I move to the top and set everything to normal, Everything returns back the way it was, but if I scroll down the groups, I can say instead of using cloud, I can say intensity. So now everything that's changed color is now in this noise group, and I can now, if I just turn it back to say use cloud, that's within the data set, and if I click remove, it goes. Okay. Generally, we're dealing with road markings and what's on the ground, so I'm also going to run a ground filter to move just the ground data into its own group. So we'll go add group again, call this road data. And this time we're going to use the ground meshing tool, which means any data close to the ground will be moved into that group, row data. We can use the general ground preset and press preview. So now we're looking at the preview ground model. So all data that's visible on the screen that's within 200 mil of that surface, vertically speaking in this situation, will be classified as ground data, or rather will be moved into the ground data group. So I hit classify. Now that that filter is finished, if I cancel the tools, Nothing seems to have changed much, but if I untick all groups, everything disappears. And if I now retick ground data, just the information that's close to the ground is left. If I turn everything back on again, I can say, well, just to show the difference, change that to intensity. And there you go. Okay, so that's running the noise filter and also running the ground filter. What about if we also just want to keep data that's close to the road? So to do that, I'm going to manually just digitize a quick route because I don't have the trajectory file, and then we we'll use that to also subclassify the data. I'll create a new group, main road. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly sketch a center line. So I use the center line code which is just set up just to draw a line. I'll do select points. I'm going to use the furthest point from wherever I'm clicking and click. Okay, so I'm just clicking a very quick rough center line. Okay, so now I've digitized my center line or center lines because I obviously need more than one. I'm going to go to the tools option again, point cloud tools, and this time group by feature. If I hit pick string, and select this first string here, I can then say move any data within certain search distances from that feature into a target group. So if we select main road this time, and let's say maximum distance of say 10 meters, there you go. So there's the preview, that's 10 meters within that center line, and hit apply. Once that routine is finished, I then just need to do it again for the smaller sections. Okay, and there's the finished result. 
we've run the overlapping scan filter, we've run the ground extraction filter, we've run the filter that removes points based on its distance to a center line, and then finally, if we need to, we can group by just a general polygon. So we can say our original group is any, and our target group is going to be noise, and then we can group any data that is left over. For instance, here, I can just select this data here, and I'm just describing a simple polygon to finish any editing that we need to. So it's also quite useful to have an image to work to because we can either use that image to digitize onto another packages or digitize onto an Enforce and drop the heights onto point cloud. We don't necessarily need the point cloud here to work with it. So to start that process, I'd go to the tools menu and we choose the export image option. You can choose your original image size and we can choose to tile it because obviously one 8K image across to this size of site is not going to give us much resolution. So we're going to enable tiling. All right, and then we have to choose our resolution. 8K is not a particularly large image, so I'm going to say custom, and our custom image size, I'm going to set that to, say, 10K. Okay, now if I was to say 0.1 meters per pixel, that works out at one image, just about. If I was to say, 0.05, so 50 mil, that gives us 6. So to be any use to us, I think we have to go to at least, say, 15 mil, which in theory would generate us 48 images. But Enforce will only generate image information where there is actually point cloud data. So a lot of these actually aren't going to exist. So next, I'm going to click Save Images. Okay, and all you do is choose a location for those images to go to. I've already done it to save time. Fundamentally, what we're going to do is we're going to select a file name, say topo, and set our file type. Now, ECW is the preferred file type for this type of work because it generates very, very quick files, i.e. they open very quickly in AutoCAD and other packages as well as Enforce, but they are also about a tenth the size of the appropriate TIFF. So when you press save, Enforce will create those files for us. I don't need to do that because I've already done it though. And here are those images. Okay, so here's one I've made earlier. This is before I did all the other filtering based on distances and etc. As you can see, it's a seamless series of images that we can then use for digitizing on. We'll see that in subsequent videos.